Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> There's so many. Thank no, you, position. everybody. Oh, oh no, yeah. thank you, everybody, for all these submissions. I mean, it is like, we got, like, we never have notes. Look at this. We got, like, notes, and Mario's got index cards. He, my kid's calling me. So um, here is a submission, viewer submission from N. Sill. A uh, couple questions here. Um, so we'll kind of wrap them all up into one because they all kind of relate. Mm -hmm. um, so first one, uh, any bills that are currently disappointing you, some of you thought we'd get more out of, um, who is it? And are there any bills you'd like to see get more playing time? Now that the bills record is where it is, you do have to kind of start looking a little bit more towards the future. Yes. So any bills players on the roster right now that disappoint you? Any players on the bench that you'd like to see play more? Uh, and not only that, besides Dave and Crossman, are there any other bills coaches on the hot seat? So I think those are both players or both coaches that are on the hot seat. Like, yeah, yeah, I just have to assume that Dave on the hot seat. He's still got a job as per this video. I mean, dropping as many points as they did, I think, kind of, kind of took care of that. But, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so Bills players that you want to see play more, Bills players that were a disappointment, and are there any other coaches that are on the hot seat? Well, I can tell you which player I don't want to see play. Who's Good. going to is Josh Allen, unfortunately. And you don't my, want to see Allen play? That's my personal thought. I just Why is that? Because I, I, it's a, it's a manifestation of I don't see, I don't want to see Dable here anymore. So why would he learn an offense that he's not going to be here? Um, Even you know, from a but, game speed perspective, you don't think it'd be good for him to play from a game speed perspective? I think he's already got enough of the game speed for this year. I, I don't want anything else to happen to the guy. Like I'm, I'm of the the Bills front office now, where I don't want anything happening to this guy. Yeah, I know, but I, he's, he's not, a big kid. I understand it, but I mean, I just don't. <clears throat> if I don't he, understand. If, he, what if he's, he's understanding the terminology, if he's like, I think and I'm going to disagree with you here. So. If he's understanding the terminology in the film room, then what? Then why not play him? Just okay. because you're, you're fearful of him getting hurt? It's like, is that the reservation? Season's over, dude. You're not making the playoffs. You're not making a run. All you're doing is giving... You have to run the table. You have to run the table. Yeah, all you're doing is giving the AFC East, which is the, which you have to always take care of first as your division, a glimpse at this kid's strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and I know you can look at the flip side of that and say, listen... Um, He's going to get experience playing against these guys he's got to play against. Mm -hmm. And he'll he'll end up learning a little bit more. But I just don't, I don't know. See, I know, look. And this is the reason why I disagree with you, right? Okay. So if he's understanding all the film stuff that he's supposed to understand at this point, right? If he's getting all that, mm -hmm. um, everybody's moving into this lane, dude. It's a single lane right now. Well, I'm trying to get over. There, This lane ends. Okay, then. So if he's understanding everything in the film room, right, and he gets it, like, that's what you brought Anderson... That's what you were supposed to bring Anderson in for. You have Barkley, who's been around the league often enough, right? You no longer have Peterman, so that's fine. You don't have to take care of him anymore. So you don't have to worry about developing two players. Just worry about developing Josh. That's now your sole focus. Not worried about Barkley. You're not worried about Anderson. Now your sole purpose could be on developing Josh Allen, right? So if you're really going to invest all those resources into developing him and he understands the film, then you start having to give him more experience with more responsibility on the field, calling protection changes, calling route changes. So the only way the receiver group is gonna get better is if Allen plays. I mean, that's that's my thought process. The only reason, the only way the receiver group gets better is if Allen plays. Do you know who they tried that with first? I would, yeah. Nathan Peterman. Yeah, yeah. How'd that work out? It lasted about a half. <laughs> As I I'm pretty sure he understood a few things in the film room as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and no, I understand. I, I completely understand your point where you're coming from about this kid. You know, let him get some of the timing down. Let him, if he's a wide receiver, that he's going to be throwing to. If this is the old line that's going to be protecting him, if this is the offensive coordinator that's going to be there, great. Get him some experience with that. But if you're going to change out the old line, if you're going to have new receivers in the offseason, if you're going to even think about replacing Dable, why put this kid in there just to learn something that he's not going to need? 
Yeah, but isn't that the business of the NFL? I mean, the cast of characters is always changing. At what point do you have to stop treating Josh Allen like he's the fine piece of china that you put in your cabinet? Well, that's, and what, only they, break that's what they the did to start the season. They, they wanted to protect this kid. They, no, was, they, they knew didn't. he wasn't They didn't ready. want to protect him. They wanted to give him the easiest hurdle to jump, and it lasted 30 minutes. They, they, they said, we're going to set him up to be successful by making sure that failure is going to come easy do to Do I have to go back to the tape now? And play how you were the motivator of the Protect Josh Allen project? I am. I'm just, I'm trying to give you the alternative viewpoint that at some point you have to look at. Then why am I even here? Just argue with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't fun. want to see Josh Allen play anymore. I, I again, giving the opposite perspective. My yeah, opinion yeah. being removed. Yeah, I'm really just yeah. removing my opinion from it. No, no, that's fine. I, I, it's, uh, um, but... And I think a lot of people will agree with you. Um, just there's probably people that do, and probably people that don't. I, and right. I understand that. I, I mean, you want to get the kid. There's the, there's the two schools of thought: get the kid experience, let the kid get some game speed, let the kid learn mm -hmm. against the AFC East and understand it, because he's got no pressure on him right now. Okay. To your point. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Now the other thing is, I don't I don't want him to be in there because, what if he ends up starting to play well? What if he's, what if he's starting to win some games, which drops their draft position, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean Matt Barkley. It's fine. If he gets hurt, you don't care. Right. You're sitting there. Yeah. Matt Barkley's gonna, you know, if he keeps playing the way he is playing, it's gonna mess up our draft status as well. So mm -hmm. I don't. To go back to the original, because I know we kind of, I took everything off course. No, but it's all part of the conversation. But who disappoints me is Dawkins, and the right side of that line. Deion Dawkins as well as the right side of the line? Yes, the whole right side of the line so you're disappoints me. So you're telling me Bodine and... <laughs> Bodine and Teller. Are, yeah. Um, no, Dawkins, but how much disappointment is it when we both said yeah. that we didn't think Dawkins was... Dawkins is a Pro Bowl guard. Yeah. He's not a Pro Bowl tackle. Yeah, I but, agree with that. But this this, this coach's staff beats their head on the wall like this. We draft him as a tackle. He's a tackle. He's going to play tackle every day. Yeah. It's like they're – who's the – it was like Earl Weaver. He called it – he told Cal Ripken, hey, you're going to play shortstop and bet third every day. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about anything else. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he was able to relax and play. It's not working out with Dawkins. No, it's – when they drafted him, I thought he was drafted to play guard, you know, and, um, Whee! It's... <laughs> Rumble strips! <laughs> Woo! Got a case of that white line fever. <laughs> That's when you're driving and you start falling asleep. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't thing. have drank all that cough syrup. Or... I'm on the same page with you, Dawkins. It's been disappointing. Um, however, I'm going to say the bigger disappointment, uh, excluding last game, has been Zay Jones. Um, I really want to see him take a step forward this year. I understand with multiple quarterback play that that doesn't always happen. Very tough. Yeah. Right? It's very tough to. Um, excluding the last game because one game to me doesn't show enough potential. Right? No. They moved him down into the, to be more successful in the slot, so I like what they're doing. But to this point, Zay Jones has been the most disappointing player on the I mean, we could, we could, we could, um We could throw all of the offensive players in a hat and, and just reach in there and pick one out. Yeah. We could probably get sure. a disappointment. Sure. Um, as far as the defensive side of the ball, I think um, a disappointment would have been. I mean, I had high hopes for Vontae Davis and Philip Gaines. I did. Yeah. And yeah. I thought those were great signings. I, I, really did. I thought so because you, you're signing guys that, um, I don't want to say proven, but had some experience in the league, and they were they were going to be a nice complement to to um, Trey White, but they weren't. And it was and, just well, there's a mindset that we've had as Bills fans under Doug Whaley was you never have to worry about the linebacker position. It's always going to shuffle. It's always going to shuffle. Um, McDermott is not afraid of shuffling cornerbacks because we saw him lose his entire secondary in Carolina, and they had to draft a whole new secondary. Yep. You know, I, I, he's not afraid of the cornerback position. No. He's not afraid of the safety. He's not afraid of the cornerback position. Not afraid of shuffling those players out because we've seen them do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think as Bills fans, we need to remember that we're going to see turnover at the corner position, and it's okay, yeah, right? I, it's and it's fine that he understands that position really well. Yeah. Right. That's that must be it because we've seen turnover. As far as um, who do I want to see play more um, on the defensive side of the ball? Um, I don't really have anybody that I want to see play more. Man. On the defensive side, I, yeah. yeah, I don't really have. I don't have anybody that I'm like. I'd like dying to see Marlowe play a little bit more. Yeah, 
Dean Marlowe. I'd like to see him. I don't know where he is. He's probably still in the practice squad. But the other, the other, who I'd like to see play more is the wide receivers that they have, the young mm-hmm. wide receivers. Yeah, you Ray Ray to. and Foster, I want to see. Yeah. You got to feature them. You got to know what you have. Yeah, you got to, fe- yeah, before next year. you be like, listen, we got yeah. these guys. Let's yeah. see what they have on the, you know, and see if we really have to make a push during free agency yeah. or during the draft to get somebody that's really an explosive player. Or yeah. well, we may have these guys on the roster. Who knows? And these guys are going to give you the best kind of football that you, you can expect because they're still trying to make the team. Quick question. Did Logan Thomas's pass completion on that fake punt save Danny Crossman's job going into the bye week? It might have, but he still got the get the okay from McDermott to do it. Sure, sure. But you're you won two games. Why not? Right? I mean you you won two games at that point. Yeah. Do whatever you need to do. So I mean the pressure's off of a lot of guys, but it, to answer the question, is anybody on the hot seat? Um I don't think McDermott is because usually a coordinator goes before that. Yeah. Frazier is ahead of that, that spirit. Frazier's that a head defense. coach candidate again. Yeah, he is. He's a head coach candidate. Um, He'll get interviewed again for a new And he should get a job. job. I believe he should get a job. But that's that's won. the reason why you have a defensive minded head coach is because, okay, if he leaves, I still got this. It's okay. But he needs to realize that he has to be an overseer. If, if the offense has such a putrid 2019 season as it did 2018 season, then McDermott, I think, is. He's in trouble. All of that play, hey, you broke the drought, great. No, it's that's win over. now, dude. Yeah, that's Come over. On. I agree with that. But you'll see a coordinator fired before he's gone. Yeah. Next year. Yeah, totally true. Um, but yeah. It's, so thanks, and so. Yep.